Hey, this is Matt Cox, and today I'm gonna to be doing a video about Julio Lugo, a guy that I knew in federal prison, and uh, so I'm gonna tell you about what, I, what he was in federal prison for and what he's done now. He was recently arrested and indicted for attempting to steal or applying for nearly $6 million in COVID relief funds through PPP loans. And I don't know how much he got. He probably got roughly, he probably got, it looks like, it looks like everything I can see he got, he got over, at least over a few million. Before we get into all that, let's go ahead and do this. Subscribe to the channel and share the video and leave a comment for the algorithm and like the video. Also, uh, this is my fourth cup of coffee. Do not cut me drinking the coffee, uh, Colby. I like drinking the coffee. I have no problem with people seeing me drink coffee. I don't think it's an issue. I wouldn't cut it out of the video. And some people say, Matt, Matt, we, nobody wants to see you drink the coffee and slurp your coffee. And you know what? I don't give a, you know what, you know, I can't even cuss. I can't cuss anymore because of the algorithm. So anyway, here it is. Fourth cup of coffee. I'm a little jacked up. Hold on. Oh, yeah. <sighs> Let me tell you about Julio Lugo because this is a funny story and it goes, it actually goes back to another story that I told before where I, I was talking about, um, was I talking about scams or was I talking about, was it, there was a video I talk about where it, it I actually mentioned this in concrete also where people are approaching me all the time about trying to help them do scams. Like, I'm not going to help you do your scam, bro. I'm not going to help you. Don't stop asking me. Uh, and I get approached, I mean, guys reach out to me at least once or twice a week and say, you know, it, you know, and sometimes it's just kind of a, an offhanded comment like, hey, bro, hook me up, man, you know, put me on the game. And then other times there are guys that actively like track me down, send me emails, send me text messages, hit me up on Messenger, you know, in, uh, Instagram. I'm like, they're like all over me trying to really get me to help them. And it's like, what are you doing, bro? Done enough prison time. Thank you. But this is an interesting story about a scam and the guy I know and the guy that's been, con he's contacted me multiple times. And I think he probably was trying to get me involved in a scam. But I digress. Let's go back to the beginning. I was in federal prison. This was a 2000, I want to say 2016, 2000, probably 2000, early 2017. Uh, I was in a, a B dorm, which is, uh, or it's not really B, B dorm. It's, it, they call them housing units. So it was in the, the B4 housing unit. And this guy comes in, black guy, a black guy named Julio Lugo, which, you know, is strange. It's, uh, it's, it's odd. And, and so I, he approached me because he knew that I had committed fraud. And, and at that point, I was writing guys' stories. And he actually kind of came up to me first. He, he asked if he could write, read some of my uh, true crime stories. So he read a couple of them. He liked them. We started talking. And he was telling me about his fraud and why he was there. He was there for running the what's called the they they, uh, they call it the the drop, but it's it's basically it's, it's tax it's tax fraud. So these guys will get people's information and then they'll file for your ta someone's taxes, like a normal citizen who works at Walmart. They'll get his information and they'll file for his taxes before he can file for them, and then they get the taxes placed onto a, a some type of a debit card or sometimes they just get a check and 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 then they deposit the check or they they get the money dumped onto a card they 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 drain the card and then when the normal person goes to file their taxes they realize oh it's already been filed for and then they have to go through a whole process of trying to explain look this guy these guys stole my taxes and it, it's it's a headache for them well it, they, listen they also like Lugo was telling me and, and a lot of these guys a lot of these guys tell me the, the same thing over and over again. So you start to know what's true and what's not true. And a lot of times these guys will use just, just any social security number. Like they'll run four or five of them and some two or three of them will go through. Well, Lugo had done it for, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars. I, I don't know what they caught him for. I don't know if it was a couple million or what. I can't recall. But he talked to me all the time. You know, he liked me. People liked me for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know what they're thinking. Ah, so good. 
Um, and I remember one time Lugo and I were sitting, we were sitting somewhere and he was telling me basically how his scam towards the end, it was like drying up because a lot of these guys I would meet for you know, tax, like they, they, they're running the drop, they're running the tax scam. And they're, they're getting like, like women in the projects that, you know, don't have jobs that have, are raising two or three kids. They'll go to them and pay them, you know, Hey, I'll give you 500 bucks to give me your social security number. And then they, they'll buy you know, as many as you can get me. I'll give you 500 bucks for $200, whatever. They all get their social security, their social security numbers to these guys. And these guys then claim taxes. They get, they get, sometimes that it goes through, but if it goes through, it could be $3,000. It could be $7,000. I mean, it could be a nice chunk of change. So they do that. And, and some of them go through a, a lot of them go through. Well, Lugo told me a lot of them weren't going through. And I remember one time we were talking and he said, you know, yeah, that, that whole scam, like the whole drop scam is drying up. And I was like, Oh, I was like, why? What, what do you mean? He was like, well, because the IRS was on to it and so many people were doing it. It was, it was just an epidemic. And there, there's newspaper articles about it. Like it, it, it was an epidemic. I mean, it was everywhere. Like the, the tax scam was everywhere. And he's one of these guys that got caught. So he gets caught and goes to jail. Uh, we were talking. I remember we were sitting there. He was like, how, how, can, how do you think I can fix that? I was like, I don't know. You know, you could maybe. And I remember we started, I don't want to say what I told him. We started brainstorming like, maybe get these people that have never had jobs and actually file for them, like start open a company and then, or, or buy a backdated company or find someone who owns a company and then file for them with the company so that the company actually files for the W-2s for the employees so that you get some corporation and you say, look, these are my six employees and this is how much money they made. And you send that into the IRS. It doesn't matter that the, that the, it doesn't matter that the company hasn't actually paid in the taxes. So if my, I own a company with 30 employees and I tell the IRS, hey, look, I got 30 employees and I paid each one of my employees $100,000. And the IRS is like, yeah, but where's our, our payroll withholding taxes? Like you never paid us the taxes that you took out of the, of the employee's checks. You're supposed to give them to us. Well, whether I give it to them or not is irrelevant. I can file my taxes, my corporate taxes, it may take the IRS six months to a year before they even notify me, hey, we never received this money. It doesn't even matter. You can then tell them, you could tell them, yeah, I got the money or, or I did collect the money, but then I spent it. it. It's a whole process. What I'm saying is, you know, I was saying, look, you know, with the tax scam, the interesting thing about the tax scam is that because it's drying up, it's dr one of the reasons it's drying up is that they're, they're claiming, trying to claim taxes and they don't have all the tax information. Well, if you actually started a company then filed for that company. Then each one of those employees went and filed for their, their tax returns. The IRS has to give you the money. The fact that your employer never gave them the money is irrelevant. The IRS has to give the employee the money. And, and that's, that's, just, that's just the way it works. Uh, whether it's fair or not to the IRS, it's irrelevant. The IRS legally allows companies to withhold money from W-2 employees. Whether that company sends it to them or not is irrelevant. The IRS now owes the employee their, their tax return, assuming they're getting money back, which most W-2 employees do get it if they're under a certain threshold. Let's put that aside. So I, I remember we were, you know, we used to brainstorm and joke around and laugh about, you know, different stuff and go over different frauds and different, you know, different scams. And like, what would you do? Ah, I would tweak it here. Here's what about that? Well, you know, this guy got caught because of this. If he had done this and we go back and forth, it was just something that the, like the fraud guys and the con men and stuff, you know, I always say con men because people know what a con man is. A lot of people don't know what a fraudster is. So, so a lot of the con men would get around and they kind of, the thing about, about Lugo was, you know, I, I, very nice guy, super nice guy, super polite. You were just, you just naturally liked him. He was, uh, he was jovial. He was funny, but he was also, also kind of a pathological liar. And he was constantly telling BS stories or lying about this. It was always these little tiny things. And, and it, it just, you know, that bothers me. Like you, you're in prison. You have to put up with certain people, you know, you have to deal with them. Hold on a second. Someone's calling me. I'm going to hang up on this guy. You have 1,800 people. You have maybe out of that 
50 people that are reasonably intelligent that you're willing to talk to. And then those people all, almost all those people have personality defects. So you just have to deal with people. You know, he starts spinning some, uh, Lugo would start spinning some, some BS lie that everybody at the table sitting there thinking, come on, man, stop. That never happened. That's bullshit. It, come on, stop it. And we're all glancing at each other going, okay, okay. I mean, you don't really call the guy out on it because what does it matter? You don't really, you don't want to start building up enemies. So Lugo and I were, we hung out, not all the time, but, but quite a while. So now the guy that called me left me a voicemail. Colby, you can leave all this in here. Like if, like all this stuff, even me talking to you, I don't care if you leave it in or not. It, it's irrelevant. So Colby is my video editor and nobody expects professionalism from me. So to sit here and think, oh, I got to clip that and make sure that he looks good here or that it, 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 it's bad because he clipped. Uh, nobody cares. I don't care. Run with it. Uh, so back to the story. Regardless of Lugo's mental issues or, or, or his, the fact that he lied constantly, he did know what he was talking about a lot of times. And, and I liked him. He was a nice guy. I mean, it's, I understand it's like saying, you know, that uh, you used to you know, eat lunch with uh, Joseph Stalin. And yeah, sure, he wiped out, you know, eight to 10 million, you know, Russian civilians and, and millions and millions of, uh, of, you know, people died and were put in gulags and whatever. You know, you say, yeah, but you know what? He was a pretty nice guy, you know, in person. So what I'm saying is, yeah, he had some issues, but he was always cool to me. Uh, I would say that it was, we were pretty, we were cool right up till he left. You know, and when he left, I remember he was like, bro, I'm going to reach out to you. Uh, I'm going to put money on your books. I'm going to hang out with you. And it, his wife actually put money on my books one time, once or twice. Like he actually sent me, like sent me money. I mean, Lugo had some money, like whatever he did, his wife ended up, I think, keeping a lot of that money and he went to prison. So Lugo got caught. I want to say it was 2014 or 15. Got a couple of years for running the tax scam uh, through his own one of his own businesses. Then he he what else happened? Uh, then he got out. I want to say he got out in two thousand and early two thousand eighteen. Uh, he got out in early two thousand eighteen because he got out like about a year or so before I did. So let's, let's say that like early. Early 2018. Well, I never really heard from him again. I don't know if I got a letter or whatever. His wife had actually put money on my books, but that was while he was there in prison, like together. Like guys will put money on their books because they've got too much money. You can only you have a spending limit for commissary. So if you can only spend three or four hundred dollars a month on commissary, you'll have somebody put money on another inmate's books and he can buy you commissary. And Lugo was a big guy. So uh, his wife put money on my books and I got to keep some of the money and then I, I bought him some stuff and handed him some stuff and that happened a few times. And uh, he said he was gonna keep in touch with me. I don't know if he ever sent me a letter. I don't think I ever really heard from him again. Regardless, I ended up getting out of prison and when I got out of the halfway house, so like a year and a half later, I get out of the halfway house. This, this is July 2000 and 2019. So he got out early 2018, I got out in 2019. When I got out of the halfway house, I didn't hear from him or anything. Like I didn't expect, I really honestly never expected to hear from this guy again, ever. And I, you know, went about my, my, my life and everything's fine. Well, I would say late 2020, in late 2020, so a, over a year, year and a, a year and change later, in late, this is only what, six months ago? I would say it was, I want it was, it was like, um, September probably September, I, I get a, I get a, a message in messenger from, from a guy named, uh, what, what is this? Uh, I think it was like Ricky Williams or Rick Williams. So I get a Rick Williams and he's like, Hey bro, what's up? I've been looking for you. Uh, here's my phone number. Give me a call. You know, Hey crazy. I remember he called me and he's like, Hey crazy man, give me a call. And I was like, Will Rick Williams, Ricky Williams. And I, I, I didn't, I don't even know who that is, but I looked at the picture and then I went to his Facebook and I was like, whoa, it was Lugo. And so 
I ended up talking to him. He, he, I think he ended up calling me. Somehow or another, we ended up talking. Like he, he, I think he did. He text me. It doesn't matter. Regardless, we end up talking. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? He's like, hey, man, what's going on? He told me he wanted to talk. He sent me another text and he wanted to talk to me about real estate. Okay, fine. So he, he said, hey, man, I'm doing real estate. Like I'm renovating a house right now. I'm, I think he said he was building another house. He's like, I'm doing so good, man. And, and he, he's going on and on. I was like, okay, okay. And then I remember he, we, I accepted a friend request from him. And I went through his scroll and, and he's got through his, you know, scrolled through his, his Facebook and he has got all these pictures of him with just Louis Vuitton and, 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 uh, you know, he's, uh, you know, it's just, it's just all kinds of, of, uh, all kinds of, of name brand stuff, you know, uh, Prada, whatever. He's driving a big car. He's got little videos. He's wearing clothes, thousand dollar, two thousand dollar suits. He's. He and his wife are all these pictures of them shopping. There's pictures of there's pictures of of them with you know just all kinds of of ridiculous stuff. And I've done rehabs. I've done lots and lots and lots of re. Sorry, I've flipped properties. Like I bought properties, took some of them, sold them. And I've done tons of them. You don't get out of prison. Put that whole operation together, and make the kind of money that he was flashing on Facebook. And I rem remember I immediately thought. No, something's wrong, something's up. What ended up happening was he, he kept, he called me another time. And he, when we were talking, he's like, man, we got to get together. We got to get together. And I was like, yeah, I know we, we, we definitely do. We definitely do. <laughs> we're thinking I'm not getting together with this guy. There's no way I'm hanging out with this guy. This guy, there's something up. And he kept talking about real estate. Like, yeah, yeah, I'm flipping a property right now. I'm fixing up. I'm doing this. I'm like, is that what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, I'm, in, I'm all into real estate and stuff. Oh, you're flipping a bunch of property. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is like my this is like my first one uh, or, or first or second one. I forget what he said. And I just remember thinking, how are you making this kind of money? You know, where's this money coming from? This guy has done nothing his whole life except for fraud. He's been He's committed nothing but fraud. I, I just, so I, I, I instinctively like, like my, I have pretty good intuition. My intuition told me something's wrong. He must've called me. I want to say he called me two or three times every single time. It was like, Hey, I'm in Tampa. Uh, uh, can we meet for lunch? I'm like, Oh man, I'm so sorry. I just left. I'm in Orlando. Like I never ended up meeting him. Like I always had an excuse. I'm sorry. I'm so swamped with work. I can't. I this. And I'm sure if I wanted to, I could have met him. But I felt like something was up. Something was definitely up. And I just something told me this guy, he's troubled. Don't meet with him. You're, you know, you're not supposed to be. You can't be hanging out with felons. I mean, he's calling. There's nothing I can do. The guy calls me. Like I, I can't be like, don't you call me again? You know, and hang up the phone. I'm like, all right, yeah, no, I understand. I understand. But I'm not mean with this guy. I'm not. I'm not going to associate myself with this guy. And no big deal. I didn't hear from him for a while, so I probably heard from him a couple of weeks ago. And then suddenly, someone sends me an, a text message that says, "Do you know this guy?" And it sends me. This clip, the clip that Colby's going to put on the, uh, I think we, you could put it up here and play it. Like if you embed it in here and just play the clip. Someone sent me this clip from the news and here's the clip. When you here at 11, this Davenport couple is accused of trying to defraud the government out of more than $5 million in COVID relief money. According to court records, the couple spent some of that money gambling at casinos. All right. So apparently... Julio Lugo was committing fraud. He was, uh, he had applied for $5.8 million in PPP loans. And, you know, those are the loans that are set up to help corporations, you know, biz large businesses, small businesses, basically make payroll. <clears throat> so, Based on what I've read, I've read like two or three articles, and almost all the articles are just really based on on the uh, uh, the, the U.S. Attorney's Office will release like a press release, and then 
newspapers pick it up and they just rewrite. They're really just, you know, anyway, you know, like, like they're not doing any research themselves. Nobody's, trust me, I guarantee no reporter picked up the phone or went to the prison, or sorry, went to the jail or wrote a letter. Nobody tried to talk to, to Lugo. Doesn't even matter. The point is, is most of these newspaper uh, newspapers will just get this art or this press release from the U.S. attorney and just rewrite it. And so I read uh, like three articles, but they're all basically the same. They have a little bit different information, you know, slightly different, but it's all pretty much the same. So here's what apparently Lugo was doing. Because it, you can't go open a company. So, you know, you can't open a company and then turn around and apply for a PPP loan. Because the IRS is, or whoever's handling it is going to go, the COVID Relief Foundation or fund or whoever's handling it, they're going to look at your application and they're going to say, this thing was open two weeks ago. How is it you have 30 employees that you need $500,000 to continue to pay? And that's just, that, that, that's not how it works. So you have to get existing companies. And sometimes those existing companies have to have filed taxes. So it sounds to me like what Lugo did was he went and he got, now keep in mind, a lot of these times you can get these companies, you can buy a comp, you can go online and buy a company that's been in existence for years. So it's like a, it's like a shell company. And so you go buy a company that's been in existence for years, or you can go to, um, you can go to the uh, uh, Secretary of State's websites for most states, and if somebody has a corporation that was open 10 years ago, and maybe they paid their fees for two years and then they stopped and the, the company's inactive, you can typically go and just pay the back payments, the back fees, the annual fees on those companies, and take that company over. So now, then if you really get creative, you can actually file back taxes for the company. You don't have to pay in. You just have to file. So sounds to me like what he's doing, what he did was he, Lugo's not that smart though, by the way. He's not gonna figure all that out. What he's most likely did and what it basically seems like it says in most of these articles is that he went to one, a couple of companies that he already owned and he applied for PPP loans in those companies' names saying, hey, I have employees that I have to pay and um, the company's been around for so many years and I have 10 employees and I need $300,000 or $100,000 or whatever the amount of money is. And I need that money to pay my employees. And they, they then say, okay, well, the company's been around for five years. I can see that it claimed taxes last year and okay, give them the money. So it's like, it's just boom. They're just giving them the money. He did 70 companies. He applied for loans in the, in, for 70 different companies. And it based on what the uh, articles say, it sounds to me like what he did was he went to friends and family and probably, probably friends of his family, like, you know, a friend of a friend, anybody that he knew that owned a company or he could get to you and you know somebody that owns a company, you know, I'll give them this much and work, I'll apply for the PPP loan because he's having success. And he probably goes and says, no, no, you don't understand. You just, here's how it works. And, you know, you put it in such a way that it makes that sound like, look, you're going to get $100,000. I'm going to give you $20,000. I'm going to do all the paperwork and you're not going to have to pay these people back at all. So it's a free $20,000, whatever that's, whatever his agreement with those people is, are. Because let's face it, he's not, they're not going to do it for nothing. Well, it sounds to me like that's what he did. And he applied for... 70 different PPP loans uh, to the tune of $5.8 million, nearly $6 million. It sounds to me like he got out over a million at least. I mean, just the numbers that they're throwing down here. I mean, he's gambling. He lost 60 something thousand dollars at a casino. He spent $350,000 on something else. He paid off a, you know, some luxury uh, SUV. He did, I mean, he he's, buying uh, all kinds of designer uh, clothes and designer, you know, all kinds of jewelry and, you know, all that stuff. And he's living in a big house and he's renovating houses. And it, look, he needed, he probably got a million, maybe $2 million. I think he pulled out, I think he pulled out, they said he pulled out in cash, $350,000 in cash. That's what they can't, that's just what the, what the 
what the FBI or whoever arrested him, uh, that's what they can't account for. Like we can't account for this because he got that out in cash. Everything else they can kind of figure out. So you can imagine what you can buy. Look, there's there's tons of ways to launder money. So if you pulled out three hundred fifty thousand in cash, I'm I'm assuming he got at least a million, maybe two million dollars out. Now they're hitting him for the five point eight million dollars, and they're saying he's looking at forty five years in prison. Now they'll stack the charges on you and just to scare you, and they they love to say that to the public. But the truth is, if you go in and, and plead guilty, then typically they run everything. Basically, all your charges get run, you know, at the very at the same time. So if you have, you can have four charges for ten for, you know, the maximum is let, let's say ten years each one. And they say, well, you're gonna if you plead guilty to all four, we'll run them at the same time. So what ends up happening is you're serving, you're you're not serving forty years, you're serving ten because you're serving all those ten year sentences at the exact same time. Um, and that's that's concurrently, right? Um. No, consecutively. What, what the fuck? Doesn't matter. The point is uh, that they're going to run them all. They're going to run them all at the same time. So most likely he's probably looking for financial institution crime, uh, financial institution fraud. It Basically, I think that the max sentence you can get is 20 years. So he's probably looking at 20 years. Now, they can hit them with other things. They can hit them with money laundering and that sort of thing. But right now, they really just have them for filing, a, a, for for lying to a financial institution. And I believe that that's the same maximum. I believe that's a maximum charge of 20 years. A bank fraud, a max charge is, I want to say, 30 years. Um, but I think financial institution fraud is 20. So he's probably looking at 20 years. The thing is, is most likely he'll cooperate. Uh, he cooperated in his first case. So I, 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 he got very little time in his first case. He's not stupid. He's not gonna, he's, 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 if they grabbed him, trust me, he's gonna talk first. He's gonna talk immediately and he's gonna talk a lot. So he's gonna cooperate against all of his friends and family. And he's probably gonna end up with 10 years. He was on supervised release, which is basically federal probation. He was on federal probation for his first fraud when they caught him for this fraud. So they're, they're not going to be happy with this guy. Like they're, he's already going to get something called, I want to think it's called, um, what did they call it? Recency. So if you get charged with, if you get charged with a new crime within one year of being released from prison or being released off of supervision. Now he was on supervision. So even if he was a year off supervision and you get hit, they actually give you, you actually get an extra level of a uh, uh, criminal history level. So the federal guidelines is what is what determines your sentence. The big old book. And when you get there, they go, okay, well, we've charged you with bank fraud. So that's six points. We And then, so you, you get six points off the bat. Well, if you get six points, you basically end up with probation. Uh, but we're also charging you with more than $2 million worth of loss. Okay, so that's another four points. Okay, so now you're at 10 points. You're probably going to go to jail. You're going to do some prison time. A little bit, six months maybe. But also we're charging you with sophisticated means because what you did was sophisticated. What you did took took brains and you had to, it was, there were lots of moving parts and you had to really think this through. So that's an extra two levels. Okay. Also, you were in charge of more than five people. So that, so you had five co-defendants that were underneath you. That's an, an, another two points. Or if it's uh, 10 people underneath you, that's another two. So now it's four points. I mean, it just keeps, oh, you also had more than 50 victims or, or usually it starts off with like 10 victims and it goes like, it's like five, 10, 25, 50, 100. Well, every one of those is an extra level. Listen, they'll take your charges, including the money charge and everything else, and just run it up. I got charged, like, and, and it doesn't matter. Like, they'll hit you. It's so lopsided the way they get they they can come at you. Like, for instance, in my case, uh, they they counted countrywide countrywide bank. They counted Countrywide Bank as four different victims. They were like, there's Countrywide Home Loans, you got them for 200000 There's Countrywide Bank, you got them for 
750,000. There's Countrywide Financial, there's Countrywide um, something else. I forget what the, the other one was, but they counted like four times. I was like, like Countrywide Mortgage or you know, he, a home equity lines of credit. Like they, they had all these corporations and they were like, each one of those is a victim. I was like, are you, they're all owned by Countrywide. They're like, no, that's not how it works. Well, then they turned around and they gave me an enhancement for having, for stealing more than a mil, or for whatever, you, uh, for stealing more than a million dollars from one financial institution. And I was like, who's that? And they said, Countrywide. And I went, well, well this doesn't even make sense. Like Countrywide, you, you said, like I didn't steal more than a million dollars from any one of those four Countrywide. They said, yeah, but if you add them together, it's more than a million dollars. I said, but you said they were four individual victims. And then they said, no, no, or they're four corporate corporation victims. So four victims, they said, yeah, but for the purposes of this enhancement, we can add them together because they're all owned by Countrywide Bank. I mean, like that's double jeopardy. And you're hitting me for the same thing over and over again and just calling it something else. So the point is, is I got hit for that. I probably did an extra couple of years for that. Uh, and that's what they're going to do to Lugo. They're going to stack the charges and he's going to say, I'll plead guilty, but he's going to cooperate against all of his friends and family. And he's going to say, you know, uh, Jimmy helped me and Tommy helped me and Bob helped me and so-and-so helped me and he did this and he did that. And he's going to put it together for him. And I'll bet you he still gets between five and 10 years. He's still going to get between five and 10 years. Even with all that, if he just says, you know what, forget it. I'm just going to cooperate. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to cooperate. I'm just going to, I'm just going to take my lumps. Uh, you know, just, just, uh, I'll plead guilty and, uh, I'll just take the charge. He's going to get 20 years. He's going to get 20 years because he was, he was on supervision when this, or on probation when this happened. He'd just been released from prison. He's already got a criminal history of fraud. I mean, and this is the other thing is you get an enhancement for fraud against the United States. He's going to probably get an extra two point enhancement for fraud against the United States. I mean, Every time, every one of these points incrementally gets larger and larger. So your first, you know, once you're in, once you're up to like 10, so let's say the next point, let's say 10 and you're going to jail for a year. Well, the next enhancement is, let's say it's, let's say it's six months. So you're going, okay, we're going to add, you're, you're currently, you're currently getting 120 months, but you also have this enhancement. Well, that enhancement adds another six months. Now it's 126 months. Oh yeah, and we're also gonna give you this other enhancement. Well, the next enhancement, it's not six months. Every new enhancement adds more months. So the next enhancement is eight more months. So now you're doing um, you're doing 134 months. Oh, and then, and then we've got these other two enhancements. Well, that's not eight, now it's, now it's 11, Plus, you know, so that's the next one's 11. And the next one on top of that is going to be, you know, 14. So you're like, it just, next thing you know, every enhancement ends up, by the time they were done hitting me with enhancements, every enhancement, every enhancement for me, okay, was like 40 months, 43 months, 48 months, 52 months. I mean, they smashed me. It was, it was, it was just detrimental. Every time somebody was like, oh, well, also he did this and that's another enhancement. That's a one point. And some of these enhancements are two, three, four points. My point is this. He's going to do some time. He's not getting out. He's not going to get out on, on, uh, He's not going to get out on his own recognizance. He's certainly not going to get out on bond. He doesn't have any of his own money. I can't imagine that he could prove. If he had any of his own money, he, he wouldn't be ripping off the federal government. So most likely, he's going to sit in prison. He's going to cooperate as best as possible. And, and he's going to get sentenced and he's going to end up going back to Coleman. And he's going to probably go back to before, no, I'm just joking. I don't know where <laughs> he'll probably will go back to Coleman though. He'll probably go back to Coleman Low. He'll see all of his old buddies. He'll walk in. They'll be like, I can't tell you how many times I saw guys leave. Listen, I did 12 and a half years. I watched guys get out of prison, get a new charge, come back to prison, serve their time for that new charge, get out of prison again get another charge and come back to prison. That's how long I was there. So he's gonna see a bunch of the same guys and they're gonna walk in, he's gonna walk in. I've seen these guys, they walk in and you look up at them and you go, 
like that. And they're like, they just shake their head and they go, and you go, what happened, man? And they're like, man, bro, you can't believe this, man. I, I, I got jammed up because of this or that or this, or, you know, I was doing this and I was doing that. And he's uh, only this time his wife's involved. Now he may take the charge for his wife. You know, Julio was that guy. Like he, he, he may take the charge for his wife. He may say she had nothing to do with it. And they may have actually indicted her and arrested her just to put pressure on him. Not that I think he requires much pressure. He's going to, you know, he, he's one of those guys. He's, he's that guy. He's, he's that guy. He's going to cooperate no matter what. He's going to cut anybody's throat he has to to get out of, out of prison. Okay. I'm that guy. So, but here's the, the interesting thing is this is why when I was, when I made my other video and I said, these people are constantly contacting me, like now he's a little bit different because I knew who he was, but he con would contact me. I mean, he, so would, he contacted me and thank God I did. What if I'd met with him? What if I'd met with this guy and the, and I'm hanging out with him, I'm making phone calls and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. We're, we're buddies and we're, and, and he could cooperate against me. He could say, yeah, he helped me. He knew everything that was going on. He, I don't have much of a, I don't really have a prayer. You, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it could be a bad situation for me. If I had just been hanging out with this guy or, or, or talking to him for anything more than a few minutes at a time, I mean, I don't talk to him a couple of times. So I, I, it, it could be bad. Like that's my, my whole thing is that these guys get busted. They grab your phone. They know. They know right then. Boom. You talk to this guy. You talk to this guy. You talk to this guy. You know, let's start dieting them. Let's, let's do it. Well, I mean, luckily I never met with the guy. I never did anything wrong. I didn't do nothing. But I mean, if I had liked him a little bit more and if he hadn't have been such a liar in prison, like he lied all the time, I probably would have been like, yeah, you know, cool. Let's, you know, maybe we can meet for lunch or something. I don't know. Who knows what would have happened? I'd like to think I'm smarter than that, but but who knows? It, it, you know what's, what's interesting about, th th this is Julio. I'm oh, sorry, uh, uh, Lugo, Julio Lugo. This is Lugo. He got caught. So you think, wow, that's pretty amazing that he he pulled off that much, he got that much money, he did this, he did that, he he figured all that out, he pulled the money out, he was applied for those loans, he's getting tons of money, a couple million dollars probably. You know, they, they say 5.8 million, but that's, that's what he applied. If you really look, read between the lines, that's what he applied for. Um, let's say a couple million. We, we're pretty sure it's a couple million, okay? So let's say it's two million. You got to be pretty sharp to do that. He applied for all of the loans from his home computer. All the FBI had to do was track back his IP address to his home computer, where they easily saw that he had applied for 70 loans from his home computer. Guy's an idiot. The guy's an idiot. It's pretty simple. He's an idiot. Now, I, 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 he doesn't even, he's had no, he has no wiggle room at all. There's nothing he can say. He can only cooperate. That's his only, that's his only chance is cooperation. Plead guilty, cooperate. It's bad. It's a bad situation. Um, all right. If you like the video, uh, do me a favor and subscribe, share the video, leave a comment for the algorithm. And uh, what, like the video, give me a thumbs up. And uh, I think that's it. I'm going to keep posting. I'm going to keep grinding, uh, grinding out. I'm going to keep doing what I do. And see ya.